Hi, my friends. It's Sherry. Today, um, let's do something really different. Haven't done anything like this for a couple months, so it's overdue. I just thought I would do sort of a uh, abstract um, painting, mixed media painting, and I'm going to throw a few things into this: acrylic paint, maybe some stamps. My Caran d'Ache oil pastel uh, crayons, uh, modeling paste, uh, stencil. Yeah, we'll see as we go along. So I have, is this an 8x10? Now I cut this from a piece of what's called, it's, um, it's for magazines. And you get it in sheets of, I think, 11 by 14 and I got a hundred sheets for $35. So they're used for when people are uh, collect magazines or something like that. It's magazine backing. Now these can be used. These are exactly the same as the backing for um, framing paintings. So, but much cheaper when you buy them for quote unquote magazines, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, that's I've cut it down to an 8x10 and I've put gesso on it just to give it some grip. So I'm going to use just um, some inexpensive craft paint. And yeah, let's just get started. Let's start with some green here, simply because I love green. I love this shade of green too. Let's bring some down here. That's been a while. I've been uh, wanting to do this for some time, but my alcohol ink and watercolors have sort of uh, ended up being totally my focus lately, so, so it was time. Now I'm just uh, slapping paint on here. This is aubergine or eggplant. This is the lighter blue is, or sorry, the lighter purple is uh, violet. Now this green, which is a little bit darker, is mossy meadow from folk art. And the other green is crafter's acrylic and it's uh, leaf green. Going different directions. Okay, with the aubergine. Now I'm going to clean my brush off a little bit because I did a boo boo by uh, putting in the dark colors before I finished with the lighter colors. So I'm just grabbing a couple baby wipes here. I thought it was so ready. I always think I'm ready and forget at least one thing. Okay, I'm just cleaning off my brush a bit and I'm going to come in with some yellow. And this is Crafters Acrylic from Deco Art and it's bright yellow. Uh, that's a lot of yellow. It's a strong color. Yellow is a strong color. So bright and vibrant though. What would we do without yellow in our lives? I don't know. I'm going to bring in more of the lighter green. Okay. I consider that my paints laid laid down. Now I'm going to dry that 
before I get into anything else and we'll be back in a flash. So my acrylic ink is uh, acrylic paint sorry is uh, dried. Now I'm going to come in and add a bit of my oil pastels from Caran d'Ache which I love. Now, let me see. I'm just blending this out with a baby wipe. You won't worry about this background here. Okay. Beautiful colors. Just basically trying to build up some depth here. Some areas I will be easier on using this baby wipe than others. And as you can see, this is intuitive. I don't know what my plan is. I don't really have a plan. I'm just laying it down. Look how gorgeous that is. Okay. Now, I want to take it easy because I don't want to uh, cover all my acrylic paint. So, let me see. Let's ground it a little bit with this brown. For those of you that haven't used these uh, Neo Color Acryl 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastel. They're fun to work with. I use them a lot for backgrounds for um, my Art by Marlene cutouts for fridge magnets and bookmarks and greeting cards, etc. Okay, a little bit of brown here, I think. All right. Well, we got some pretty wild colors happening here. Love it. Love it. Now I'm wondering, I know my uh, subscribers, or at least my viewers, the majority are um, over 55. I'm going to put a little yellow up here. Now I do have some younger folks that, that join me, but predominantly over 55s. And a lot of over 65s, over, over 60. So I have a lot of people my age, which is, you know, that's a treat. Okay, I'm going to stop there with that. And I'm going to come in with uh, some stamps, I think. No, I'm going to use modeling paste just to give this texture and do some stenciling. So, yeah, I'm just going to use a makeup sponge. Now, I use these especially because I find I have a little more control. I don't, I'm not good with the control stuff. <laughs> I don't control my stuff very well. I tend to have a hard time uh, putting down 
stencils using stencils so I find this sponge helps me so I don't uh, overdo it and I get a nice clean even uh, spread for the most part okay Yeah, I used to use a palette knife, but I've just found I had a harder time controlling it with the palette knife, so I uh, started with the sponge, and this works better for me. Okay. But you have to remember not to press too hard. Or you'll eat away at your sponge. <laughs> okay, that works. Now, nah, maybe a little bit more. Because I'm going to end up covering quite a bit of this. So I want a fair amount down. Okay, that should do it. All right, put the cover back on my modeling paste because it will dry out. And that's the end of that. Okay, just gonna take the dryer over this for a moment. I think I will come in with a little more paint. Yeah, let's do that. Just to build up some uh, layers here. A little more of the straight yellow. Okay, now I'm going to dry that again and then we'll be back in a flash. So that's dry now. I want to bring in a little bit more paint because as I said, we're building this up. Let's go with some of the aubergine again.
and I'm going to clean my brush. Let's bring a little yellow toward the center. Just punching that in. And I'll do a little bit of that with the green. And as I mentioned, that we would lose some of our stencil here. Okay. And a wee bit more of the lighter purple, which was lavender. Right. Now we're going to dry this again, lots of drying, and come in with our stamps. Now I did dry that, but at, looking down on this, I think I want to add a little bit more of this orange. Now if I have two shades of orange here and a bit of red. I just want to, um, yeah, I just want to incorporate that in another area because I like that. It uh, really uh, creates depth. And a little bit of a deeper orange. Now this one is uh, Vermilion. And the first one was orange. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I like that. And maybe a touch more with this emerald green. Okay, just trying to layer this up. like that and are we done there I think I'll bring a little bit more down here with a touch of yellow I think green here and 
and some red. This is scarlet. This is scarlet or escarlate or a chocolate. <laughs> These are out of Switzerland. Swiss, Switzerland's bordered by so many countries that they speak. My sister lives in Switzerland. So, but she lives close to France. So, uh, they're predominantly English and French in that area. You could be Swiss. You could be German, Swiss. Yeah, just uh, people learn to speak a lot of languages. My uh, niece speaks English, French, German, and she's working on a fourth language now. And she's quite fluent. So... My sister works for the UN. Luckily, she got that job because English was her first language, being from Canada. I'm going to dab in a little bit more purple here. And she's done well for herself um, at the UN. She's doing quite well. So, okay. I think we're done with that. One more session drying, or should I put my stamps down? I think I could stamp now. Now I chose this script. And speaking of languages, I believe this script is in French. Just going to write it down here. Lots of ink. Okay, I can lay some script down here. I'm going to hold this down for you know, 15, 20 seconds, so I can be sure I'm getting some kind of imprint here over all these wax pastels and ink. Or not ink, sorry. Um, paints. Okay. A little bit more. I find if I put the stamp down and press my stamp into the ink, I pick up more ink that way. Okay, let's just put a one there. All right, that should work for that. Now I'm going to clean my block off and bring in a, a B. I just love putting bees down in my mixed media pieces. Bees, butterflies, leaves, but especially bees. And one more, going with the rule of threes and fives. Let's have this one just coming in on the edge here. Okay. 
Okay. Clean my stamp off. With a really dirty baby wipe. <laughs> oh, I have so much dye on my hands now. I don't know how people do it where they can stamp and, you know, work in acrylics and alcohol ink and seem to get next to nothing on themselves. Maybe it's just a lot of editing. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I'm going to clean off my French script. I can clean that better later. Now I want to come in. I have two little needle nose bottles here that I put acrylic ink in just to do this, what I'm about to do. I'm going to add some design elements, like maybe a, no, I think I'll, I like drawing these lines, these wiggly lines. me they just add again another point of interest and I want that a little bit thicker so I'm going to go over that again and as you see I'm not doing a straight line and Let's do a circle. Now we can come in and paint these if we choose. Okay, now I have a white. I have a fair amount of white here, but I'm going to put some dots. And need something in the center, I think. Okay, now let's bring a little bit of paint in and fill these in somewhat. Let's try. I'm going to change my brush. My other brush is a little too dirty. What color do I want here? Uh, I could introduce, no, I want a little texture. So I think I'm going to put, let's do one in the aubergine. I think we probably need to do all three in the aubergine. And maybe we'll bring the white in and I 
or the black to make that a little bit thicker. And I think I'll come in with uh, my Caran d'Ache pastels. Yeah, a little more black here. Now let's make these lines a little bit stronger. I think we might be done. She says as she keeps going. <laughs> That's so me. Sort of scraping in some lines now, just for a I think my little bottle is gummed up. Yeah, I'm working way too hard to get that out. That's okay, I like what it created. So I'll go for the gusto. Okay. Now I believe we're done. And I think I said that already <laughs> once before. I'm just wondering, do we need anything else on here? It's, uh, I think it's done. I believe it's done. I might make these black areas a little bit stronger. This is a little too much in the center for me, so I'm going to bring it out a bit. Okay, we're done. We are finished. I'm quite happy with that. Now, since I did cut it 8 by 10, once this is thoroughly dried, I can spray it with Kmar varnish or whatever varnish you have. I know in Australia, you don't get Kmar varnish. So Kmar varnish, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, and any other kind of varnish, I, I guess. I, I don't know what to recommend. Maybe somebody could say in the comments, if you're from Australia, maybe you could say what you use um, in your country or any other country. Kmar varnish, I'm sure, is, doesn't go it's not international so whatever type of varnish that you use if you would mention it in the comments i'd really appreciate it that would benefit uh, 
my viewers. So yeah, a couple of sprays of Kmart varnish or varnish. And uh, yeah, you're done. You can put this uh, in an 8x10 frame, matted and framed. Or you can, what I think I'm going to do is I am going to spray it with the varnish. I'm going to apply this to a canvas or a board and I'm going to resin it. I think I have this is quite a strong piece and I think it would be um, it would work well with uh, resin. So if you're interested in seeing how this looks after I resin it, um, again let me know in the comments and I will be sure to do that. So you guys know the routine. Press the notification bell if you're already subscribed. If you, if you aren't, today's a good day to subscribe. Likes and comments always help me. Um, that's what YouTube looks for in order to promote your videos. And uh, yeah. So you folks have a good rest of your day. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.